Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The mandate to be a blessing to the globe is not one that is unique just to the School of Ministry students, nor is it one that is unique to man of, a man of God, a woman of God, some preacher somewhere. It's a mandate that is for everyone, that among the many things you must do for the kingdom within your lifetime is to be a blessing through your life through the efficiency of your witness. Oh, I'm happy to see my dear people from Abuja too. Give them a big God bless you. These guys go everywhere. God bless you, my dear people. Hallelujah. And so, the School of Ministry is a contribution to helping people fulfill this mandate of being a blessing at a global scale. When he spoke to Abraham, Abraham just came out of awe of the Chaldeans. And yet he told him that in thee, through you, through your life, through the efficiency of your witness, he said, all the families of the earth, not some, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Hallelujah. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, we'll read verse 2, then we'll go to verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 2, we'll read verse 2 and then verse 5. It says... And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, not willing men, not just intelligent men, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So Paul is charging his son in the gospel. He's saying the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses. He says, commit thou make sure you do not die with this investment of God upon your life commit it to faithful men who will commit will be able to teach others also this is the idea behind the school of ministry to be able to pour into as many willing zealous faithful hearts that which God has shown and helped us to see by his mercy to the end that we replicate the possibility for reaching the globe with the wisdom, the power, the grace of God. And I'm very excited to be graduating this set. Uh, I will give you a very quick charge and then we'll go straight uh, to the impartation. Verse 5. Same 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strives lawfully. The meaning of that is that nobody becomes a champion. Nobody becomes a master guessing. You can start guessing, but there is a realm of competence, a realm of proficiency where you are no longer guessing. You have laid hold on eternal life. Hallelujah. I'm sure that you may have heard it at least once in the course of your lecture for the students that when it comes to knowing God, our learning Him never ends. Even in heaven, we'll still learn God. But believe me when I tell you that when it has to do with living a life of dominion and grace, the knowledge you need are finite. You can lay hold of it. Like a student exhausts a curriculum, learning continues even afterwards, but he's exhausted that body of knowledge. An individual can, through structured mentorship, exhaust the body of knowledge that makes for an excelling life in the kingdom, an excelling life in the spirit. Hallelujah. You can lay hold on eternal life. And unfortunately, there are many people who have not paid attention to be methodically mentored, to structurally learn how to live a life of victory. There is no guessing about living a life of victory. Every man's work will be tested eventually. Are we together now? And the Bible says that in a great house, there are all kinds of vessels. And it says some vessels already, by their disalignment, are vessels unto dishonor. 
whereas others are vessels unto honor then he says if a man will purge himself that man will be a vessel unto honor meet for the master's use i can tell you that god is in need of people you would think because there are so many preachers so many churches so many people doing great things for the lord i am always overwhelmed by these statistics that we have now a little above 8 billion people upon the earth and we have just less than 2.6 billion professing Christians. So in the midst of all the conferences, the conventions, all of the meetings, we have not even closed that margin. About 8 billion people and counting upon the earth and yet we have only about 2.6 billion professing Christians and this does not mean serious Christians this doesn't even mean genuine Christians just Christians who fill the form and wrote Christian there if you now see that from the lens of scripture it can distill to almost less than half of it so in as much as we celebrate the things we're doing let me tell you the truth the global harvest is still the Bible says the harvest is wide but the laborers are few the few that are there will become victims if we do not add more to the field. It is a reason why the fall of one becomes a big catastrophe to the kingdom because the laborers are few. And so when God finds a people like this who are willing to invest a portion of their lives to be trained towards efficiency, let me tell you, it gladdens the heart of God. I want to tell you categorically and with every sense of audacity that this would be about the wisest decision you've made with your life this year to invest these weeks these months of your life to learn you will see the fruits and the nations will thank you in the name of Jesus Christ in first Timothy chapter 4 first Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15 it says meditate on these things there are some these things you've been taught from pneumatology to leadership to ministry to personal transformation finance you've been taught several things by your lecturers um, through the rain through the sun and the bible says meditate not just know them meditate on these things then it says give yourself holy give yourself holy to them that thy profiting may appear unto all i hate to say this but you will think because hands will be laid upon you shortly you will think because you've sat down under structured mentorship that in itself is only potential for exploits it does not mean in itself that you will live a life of exploits hallelujah there were many people in jesus's crusades i wonder why they were not mentioned where were the 72 the bible talks about a few of the 12 but he also mentored 72 he also taught 5,000. they only ate the bread and left the word and the bible says we live by bread and by knowledge they threw away the knowledge carried the bread even threw part of the bread and left home and some of them ended up living mediocre lives but there were a few who meditated upon the things that he said they gave themselves wholly to them and the Bible records the exploits of these individuals. Perhaps they did not know the extent of their training and the kind of spiritual investment that was being done in them. He that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Hallelujah. I want you to make up your mind that you will pay attention to these things even after you are done meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them and the bible says your profiting will appear unto all now a very quick thought and then we'll pray i want to borrow an illustration that i gave recently while preaching in ghana um decisions decide destiny this is a message now to everyone decisions decide destiny in decision is a decision itself decisions decide destiny that the end point of a man's journey is a messless product of his decisions or his indecisions and do you know if this is true that decisions decide destiny then it means you must respect the information that guides your mind 
as you make those decisions whatever influences your ability to make that decision has also influenced the outcome of your life let me take it again decisions decide destiny there are others who have decided to fail there are others who have decided to be mediocre they do not even know they made the decision they would argue that it will, they did not make that decision but decisions decide destiny because the same lord is rich unto all are we together and god leaves every man to choose his lot in life whether life or death whether blessing or cursing whether failure or defeat a life of excellence or a life of mediocrity some have painfully chosen a life of grace and glory others have chosen a life of excuses and mediocrity decisions decide destiny the second thing I want everybody to know tonight is that your mentality, your belief system is the platform upon which your decisions are made. Your mentality, your belief system is the platform upon which your decisions are made. So if your decisions are poor, if your decisions are anti-destiny, anti-greatness, it is not really the decision it is the belief system that sponsored that that decision every decision is sponsored by a belief system don't forget this the decision to fail is sponsored by a belief system the decision to prosper is sponsored by a belief system the decision to be serious with god until your results speak is sponsored by a belief system the decision to be an arm robber is sponsored by a belief system the decision to be a world changer is sponsored by a belief system the decision to live in a realm of excuses blaming every other person but yourself is sponsored by a belief system the decision to be and remain poor is sponsored by a belief system the decision to still remain a victim of witchcraft, a victim of attacks and yokes of darkness is sponsored by a belief system. I know your belief system by seeing the quality of decisions that come out from you. I know your belief system by seeing the excellency of the results that eventually, maybe not immediately, but the results that immediately, given ample time, the results that emanate from your life are a reflection of the quality of your belief system. Hallelujah. Do you know that belief systems are so powerful that it literally defines what the nations will know you to be? Whether a failure, whether a great person. Let me do an illustration. Um, please give me the bottle of water. I made this illustration in Ghana and I want to make it now. Please lend me your attention everyone. Look at this. What do you call this? A bottle of water. Am I right on that? Do you know that this is a bottle? The manufacturer did not necessarily make the bottle for water. It was a bottle. Can be a bottle of anything. But you name the bottle by the content that found its way into the bottle. In this case, water. The new name becomes a bottle of water water if i empty this water and fill it with oil the name changes immediately in honor to what content it has allowed it can become a bottle of oil it can become a bottle of poison it can become a bottle of kerosene it can become a bottle of cashew nuts it can become a bottle of whatever it can even be an empty bottle these are the various names this bottle can be called depending on what content it allows is someone learning now so if you call this a bottle of water it's not an insult you are describing what is has allowed to be in it if this bottle is angry at the water one benefit of this bottle is that it has the ability to be opened and to be closed it has the ability to be opened and to be closed this is how a mindset is 
that if you are discontented with the things that, that represent your mindset. So I gave this illustration. There are many names you can be called from a belief system standpoint. You can be Joshua Selman the fool, Joshua Selman the mediocre, Joshua Selman the leader, Joshua Selman the failure, Joshua Selman the anointed, Joshua Selman the blessed, Joshua Selman the advancing. Oh, it's still Joshua Selman, but at any point in my life, the description of my destiny will be with respect to my belief system. Is someone learning now? Many of us, because of our backgrounds, you did not participate actively in all honesty over the contents that became the initial composition of your mindset. Many of us were conditioned environmentally. You grew up seeing things and you knew things to be that way. But in everybody's destiny, this is a message to everyone. God gives you a chance through the journey of your lifetime to choose whether to leave that content the way you found it or take advantage of the grace of God to begin to change it. So it's possible you came from a family made up of witchcraft and defeat with all due respect, maybe a polygamous family and all you saw was hate and whatever it is. You can get to a point in your life where you say from this day forward, I make up my mind to empty this content. It will be a journey you've never taken before. It's a virgin dimension, but that you are saying, knowing that I have the power to redefine find my destiny and you can pour out the mindset of failure hatred a mindset of blaming people and blaming things poverty and mediocrity are we together a mindset that has no regard for growth you can pour away that mindset and receive with meekness another kind of belief system now what I did not tell you is that nobody has the ability to choose consequences. You do not, you cannot choose consequences. Consequences are connected automatically to decisions. You are given the liberty to make decisions, but with every decision will come a consequence. Failure is a consequence. Poverty is a consequence. An excelling life is a consequence. Victory is a consequence. A preacher is a consequence. An armed robber is a consequence. I have taught you here, if you recall, that if you put one person by my left and the other by my right, and you call the one person by my left a preacher, and you call the person by my right an armed robber, if both of them just become dead bodies here, you don't call the dead body a preacher, and you don't call the dead body an armed robber. So who was the preacher? The preacher was the belief system. The armed robber was also the belief system because now the bodies supposedly have equal value. What made them different? What is the difference between a CEO and with all due respect, someone somewhere who is at the lowest levels of life? It's not necessarily their size. They may even be blood brothers. The difference is that they have been given this gift by God to open or close their mindsets at will and others opened it to rubbish they opened it to cunningly devised fables and they allowed themselves to be filled with things that are not excellent the Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 8 finally brethren it says whatsoever things give it to us are honest are true are honest are just are pure are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise it says think on these things you have the ability to culture your thinking you have the ability to invest on this project of transformation the students who are graduating now have decided as an act of their will to work with the holy spirit and allow for this process of transformation your life today this version of you is a testament of endurance it is your telling your destiny that i cannot be the way i came i came from a family say of witchcraft i came from a family of failure but i know that the one thing god gave every man that only death can take away is the power to decide the prodigal son lost everything except the power to decide and he used that same ability to bounce back he said i will arise the Bible did not say the Holy Spirit spoke to him. 
I will arise as an act of my will. Lose any other thing in this life, but if you still have the power to decide, you can decide to start again. You can decide to rise again. You can decide to be anointed again. It is on the basis of the will that we can say, rejoice not over me, my enemies. It doesn't matter how my yesterday is. I still have a gift. I may lose money, but not that gift. You may lose reputation, but not that gift. Like Samson, you may even lose certain dimensions of your grace, but not that gift. That gift can help any man to bounce back again. Now listen, there are many people who do not know that the same energy it takes to complain, to give excuses and to blame is the same energy it takes to decide to move forward. The energy it uses, the energy that is required to complain and grumble and give excuses is the same energy it takes to make decisions. On the one hand, someone is using the energy left to say, I will make up my mind to know God. I will make up my mind to live a victorious life. I came from a poor family, but a poor family will not come out of me. I came from a family of witchcraft, but the glory will come out of me. My children will be called blessed. I, I suffered serving idols. I know the curses that came upon my life, but I've made up my mind that my children will be royalty, serving the Lord. As at the time you are making that decision, let me tell you, the devil will lie to you as though you are just speaking gibberish but the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so you begin to re-engineer your mentality that though my beginning be small my latter end shall greatly increase so what if i came from a family with no light so what if i came from a family where i had to trek to the well that was my yesterday the beautiful thing about yesterday is it is never allowed to come into your today except you allow the mindset that brought yesterday to follow you into your today is someone learning if you choose to be a preacher you can be called a preacher the preacher is the mindset if you choose to be a failure the failure is not your body it's not the sound of your voice it is the content of your belief system what turns a man from a failure to a success it is the journey of transformation that mental transformation by the spirit the bible says whom the god of this world had blinded their minds this is what Satan does. He blinds your mind so that you give up and you feel you cannot amount to anything. And we live in a culture that endorses these wrong belief systems. Look at me. Do you know what a stronghold is? A stronghold is a demonic presence that builds fortification around faulty mindsets to keep the victim perpetually in that thought line. So when the devil comes, do you know every evil depends on a certain mindset it must connect with to manifest every prophecy depends on a certain mindset there is what god will tell you and it will fall like he lied because the mindset requirement biology teaches us that there has to be a union am i right on that there's something that comes from the man, your seed. There's something that comes from the woman that produces life. This is so in the spirit. When the word comes, there is a mindset like a womb that must receive it. And in the physical, we have something called barrenness. The inability of the womb to receive seed, retain seed until it delivers a child. That is also true in the realm of the spirit. That there is a certain kind of mindset that can make the word of God no matter how powerful of non-effect. So it doesn't matter what God says. There is a belief system that partners with prophecy. When he told Abraham, I will make you the father of many nations. I hope you know that for a long time, Abraham did not have the mindset that will connect to that prophecy. Once and again, God will come and say, Abraham, I'm here again. One time God said, I need to help this man because this guy does not know the extent of the blessing. He said, Abraham, leave your room. I need to walk with your mind. Count the stars. Abraham would count and give up, count and give up. He says, so shall your seed be. Finally, Abraham believed God. The Bible says it was credited like an alert, credited to him that he is now righteous. He can now receive that which I have said. 
there are many of you who have great things that have been spoken concerning you but every prophetic word has a mindset requirement Causes require a certain kind of mindset to work. Just generational causes are enhanced by generational mindsets. There is a mindset that follows every cause. The day that mindset refuses to partner with that cause, it dies. It dies. So when spirits want to perpetuate certain patterns, what they do is they become guardians of mindsets, not guardians of outcomes. Demons don't bother on outcomes. They bother on mindsets. There is a way if you keep thinking you will remain poor. It doesn't matter what job you get. There is a way if you keep doing ministry, you will fail. It doesn't matter which country you go to. There is a way if you live your life, you will be defeated. Even if Satan is not in existence. Belief systems. Belief systems. There is what God can tell you right where you are. And you say, Lord, I have heard the word. My own assignment is to walk with the spirit of grace. To build the mindset that connects to that prophecy. My dear people, listen to me. This journey called the school of ministry is an attempt to program your mindset. So that the things that have already been spoken concerning you in redemption can now find expression in your life. Are we together? It is everybody's responsibility to journey with the word of God, journey with the Holy Spirit and get to a point where you begin to dis deconstruct wrong mindsets. Wrong mindsets. The weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Listen to the pulling down of strongholds casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ it says bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ imagine with me an individual who has a mindset of hatred jealousy dishonor prayerlessness carnality unseriousness paint a picture of such a person help me describe let me tell you the truth mindsets have prophetic capabilities they don't predict your future they show it with accuracy mindsets have prophetic capabilities show me your mindset with the intelligence and the accuracy of an artist i will draw your tomorrow i don't need to be a prophet I don't even need to have the gift of the word of knowledge. Just give me a chance into your mental space. Give me a pen and paper and I'll begin to draw your tomorrow. And if that mindset remains that way with uncanny digital accuracy, that destiny will become. Show me a man who was born in pain and failure and misery. And then he's paid the price with God. Submitted to structured mentorship. To now begin to recalibrate your thinking. I show you a man whose yesterday will never be featured in his tomorrow again. But show me a man who keeps giving excuses. Wrapped up with pride. Believing that one day it will go better. I show you a man who has entered a journey of recycling pain. Recycling pain. Transferring that pain to his children and to his children's children. Prosperity requires a mindset to manifest the anointing requires a mindset to manifest victory requires a mindset to manifest leadership requires a mindset to manifest excellence a mindset to manifest this charges to everybody there is no point in your life where you should be satisfied with your current mindset the possibility for growth exists remember my illustration it is within your power to open that bottle again and say from this day forward i pour out this content of dishonesty of mediocrity of prayerlessness of blaming people of jealousy of giving excuses and all of that i i empty myself fill me with wisdom fill me with power fill me with faith fill me with diligence let me understand that if it will ever happen it depends on me men can change if their mindsets can change men can grow if their mindsets can grow men can be wealthy if their mindsets can be wealthy men can be anointed if their mindsets can be anointed your
your life will be a reflection of what your mindset has become. Excellence is a mindset. Failure is a mindset. I taught in Ghana contrasting the loser's mentality and the mentality of a victor. When the Bible says, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph, that prophetic word will remain barren in your life. You want to become a powerful man of God, taking the nations for Jesus? It is more than oil. The value of the oil is that it comes upon a transformed mind. When the anointing comes upon a mindset that is still holding on to yesterday, the anointing will have to wait until the day the mindset changes. Do you know the oil the woman had in her room, the wife of the late prophet, it would have remained there forever with potential to change her life. But the size of the vessel that the oil was poured in was the reason why the oil looks small. The prophet said, I know your problem. You don't need more oil. Go and borrow more vessel. Expand your thinking. Add other dimensions to your thinking and see the kind of preacher you will become. Add other dimensions to your mindset and see the kind of businessman you become. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen, let me tell you something. Um, I think it was last year or so, I traveled to a particular place, I would not mention the name, and I think I just returned and then I something took me home or so and I saw around my environment the same old buildings I saw as a child the same old people some of those people as a baby were very prosperous people now they had faded I mean they had faded and I said God this is not your will my Bible says they that be planted in the house of God they shall flourish in the courts of our and flourishing what is the meaning of these things and the Lord reminded me again that he's not responsible for deciding men's realities he places before men life and death he places before men blessing and cursing he cannot force you even at the detriment of your eternal destiny you can choose to tell God I am not interested in being born again and he will respect you unto your damnation hallelujah to the 2024 class you've been given a rare opportunity by the God of all grace out of 4,500 students thereabout God has granted you grace to have come this far do not waste that investment of the spirit you are about to receive an impartation now the grace can work because the mindset has given space and it's a plethora of graces in one touch you'll be receiving a plethora of graces in one touch your heart must be open there is wisdom among the things you'll be receiving there is favor among the graces you'll be receiving there is the hear ye him anointing among the graces you'll be receiving there is the grace that attracts men quality men men that stand with you men that support your vision there is the grace that provides the staying power enduring until prophecy manifests there is a grace that makes you a sign and a wonder it says i and the children that the lord has given me we not i we are for signs and for wonders in israel and while this impartation is happening let me encourage everyone this is not a show of just watching people fall under the anointing right where you are you can begin to make resolutions my life cannot continue like this my life cannot i cannot hate my father i cannot hate my mother but i came to church tonight to decide like this bottle i will no longer be called a vessel of failure i will no longer be called a vessel of dishonor i am ready to partner with prophecy and to begin to rewrite my possibilities to partner with prophecy begin to rewrite my reality that i will not just be an empty my life will show that I am ruler. My life will show that I am healthy. My life will show that I am a well watered garden. Can we begin to pray in one minute, everyone? Just take a minute to just pray in the spirit. I desire change. I desire transformation. My life is still inconsistent with what the word says should be finances still inconsistent 
a level of influence still inconsistent my health still inconsistent it is given to every man by the power to choose to rewrite your destiny to rewrite your possibilities to redefine the outcomes of your destiny someone take a minute and pray is a mystery 30 31 give it to us media thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel saying this shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations this is ordinary oil it comes from a tree it carries no power on its own but it is a mystery it can be a conveyor of divine power and divine grace father in the name of Jesus by the mystery of impartation, you have granted us the grace. Someone come help so that. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that as hands come upon these people in the name of Jesus every grace that you have deposited upon this life and upon this house Lord freely as it has been received freely let that grace in its fullness be poured upon your people turn them into signs and wonders to the glory of your name and I pray by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit that this anointing from this moment in the name of Jesus Christ let the hand of God rest upon it in the name of Jesus we are speaking over the students now by the power that raised Christ from the dead everything that came with your background that has the potential for stopping you as far as destiny actualization is concerned by this anointing I decree and declare be delivered now be delivered now by this grace that is upon your life I prophesy over you go forward go forward I release that grace go forward in life go forward in ministry go forward in your career go forward in the name of Jesus the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets know how I place a mark upon you anyone that finds you goes down instantly in the name of Jesus everyone who finds God's program over your life goes down before your face in the name of Jesus Christ I declare speed upon you someone you catch that grace and you begin to run like Elijah speed in ministry speed in destiny in the name of Jesus I speak to you according to Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5 the men that God has raised to stand by you the men that God has raised to support you in business in ministry in career I decree and declare by the spirit of prophecy may they gravitate towards your destiny may they gravitate towards your destiny may they gravitate towards your destiny what your father could not do what your mother could not do for their sake and for the name of Jesus I empower you to do it the milestones they could not cover may you cover that and even more in the name of Jesus if you came from a defeated family a defeated family will not come out of you in the name of Jesus I decree and declare you will serve God with integrity what they say cannot be done may you be a record breaker in the name of Jesus your life will bring great glory to the name of the Lord your witness the efficiency of your witness will bring great glory to the name of the Lord because of you many will come to Jesus because of you many will love Jesus in the name of Jesus for those of you called into the ministry of kingdom financing I place grace upon your hands fire upon your mind go and prosper break financial barriers in the name of Jesus everyone here who is called into the fivefold ministry you will not be a disappointment to the Lord you will not be another casualty waiting to happen in the name of Jesus the Lord will stand behind you as a mighty terrible one he would defend his name over your life go and do exploits everything gives birth after its kind I release you to do exploits in the name of Jesus I release you to do exploits regardless the nation regardless the state regardless the territory go and do exploits in the name of Jesus Christ pray for you whatever it is some of you should have entered certain dimensions in the spirit and certain dimensions in destiny but for whatever reason maybe because of mistakes because of carelessness because of ignorance or witchcraft in the name of Jesus I decree and declare according to the word of the Lord unto his servant that you pursue you overtake and without fail recover all I say it again pursue overtake recover all pursue overtake recover all pursue overtake recover all in the 
name of Jesus. Anyone who has asked you where is your God, may your results answer them from today. In the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God. The Bible says his name was John. Verse 7 says the same, not another one. The same came for a witness. Listen, that he might bear witness of the light. That through his witness all men might believe. May this become your mandate from today. You will bear witness of the light. That through your witness in every area at all, men will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And therefore, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the privilege of apostleship, I stand in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, and I declare this set, School of Ministry, Zaria Campus, 2024 set, in the name of Jesus, we declare all of you graduates, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Celebrate yourselves. Let's give them a big God bless you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please be seated. Just guide those under the anointing. Please be seated. Thank you everyone for your patience. We're making great progress already. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a minute for everyone to settle down and then we go quickly to the next, the next, um, amen, hallelujah. Now just a word of encouragement for someone, you will think all of these prayers because you are not part of the school of ministry students. You see there's something about the presence of God, anywhere there is hunger, there is a response. You may not be a school of ministry student. But from the sincerity of your heart, whether within the auditorium or scattered across the overflows or even connecting online, from the sincerity of your heart, you can desire to carry certain graces and you'll be surprised that you will walk out of this place with those graces. Hallelujah. When you study church history, it was said about a man called William Seymour. He was not part of the people who were being trained, who were being built. He was popularly called the one-eyed evangelist. He was really not part of those who were being mentored and trained. But his hunger drove him until he contacted genuine fire. And so I'm praying for every other person aside from the school of ministry students. It will not be that you just came as a spectator or as one who is encouraging these people. You will also carry something out of this place today. May that be your portion. You believe that shout a loud amen. I speak over your life in the name of Jesus for the remaining part of the year. Let grace rest upon you. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Let the favor of God speak in your life. Amen. I decree and declare where your spiritual life has gone down or is going down, I declare that it jacks back to life in Jesus' name. Amen. Fresh fire upon your prayer altar. Amen. Fresh passion for the things of God. I separate you from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. I call you a soul winner in the name of Jesus. Your life is actively part of God's program in the name of Jesus. Hear me. No one who witnessed this service tonight will be buried in death in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that every plot of death over your life, whether by accident, by assassination or any kind of demonic attempt you are exempted from it now in jesus name because you are here may the lord bless you and bless your loved ones wherever they are represented i decree and declare that in the name of jesus they are covered for your sake they are protected for your sake in the name of jesus 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 I know that there's been a lot of economic challenge, you know. I need to speak over your life on this wise before we end the service. Um, I was very humbled and touched. When I came around, I saw so many people around my house. Usually, you know, people just hang around children. And all I could just see is just hunger. I know that there's a lot of hunger in the land. I want to speak over your life. Um, 
God always has an exemption package for those who are careful and attentive to his ways. Are we together? Yes. That when there was darkness in Egypt, there was still light in Goshen. Therefore, I pray for you. By the ministry of destiny, help us. May my God sort your finances. For the remaining part of this year, I forbid you from begging. Say amen. I forbid you from borrowing. You will not get into financial troubles. The favor of God will rest upon you. Help us will come in their numbers to rescue you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus name. You need Jesus. Now and you need Jesus fast. The business of Jesus is no longer something to think about. Daily dal. There are people who woke up this morning on earth. But they are now in hell. Because they rejected Jesus. I'm not scaring you. But that is the honest truth. Whether you are outside or you are in this place. I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Ye must be born again, the Bible says. You can choose to reject Jesus. But the Bible tells us that no man comes to the Father except by Jesus. So let me give someone an opportunity. Perhaps you are coming from the overflow outside. Or you are here. Most of the people here are the students. But we are not taken for granted. I want to count one to five. For the sake of one or two people who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me an opportunity... I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. As we count one to five, please allow those who will be coming from outside to come quickly. You would come and stand in front of the stage here. You are rededicating your life to Jesus or you are making this a first time decision. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Let's appreciate them as they come. If there's anyone coming from outside, please hasten their step so that they come quickly and then we'll pray. My brothers and sisters, thank you very much for making this bold decision. Would you lift your right hand high above as a sign of surrender? Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Say, I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep the hands lifted. Father, thank you for this once. No man comes to the Father indeed except by you. You have drawn them to yourself. I pray that based on the authority of your word, we declare their sins forgiven. We call them the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Bona fide recipients of the life of God. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over their lives. The grace to live victorious Christian lives I release upon them now. And I pray that they will serve you all the days of their lives. Forward ever and backward never. In Jesus matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Please do me a favor. Just look to um, that will be behind you. You will have a counselor waving their hands. They will have a word with you very quickly. And then you are back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Koinonia, one more time. Give them a big God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now we can share the grace. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely. God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.